Every bird that we see today, from pigeons living behind your AC unit to the penguins in Antarctica, is a living dinosaur. In fact, birds are the only group of dinosaurs that survived the mass extinction 66 million years ago, which was triggered by an asteroid impact on Earth. But not all the birds alive at the time made it. Why the ancestors of modern birds lived while so many of their relatives died has been a mystery that paleontologists have been trying to solve for decades. Now, two new studies point to one possible factor, the differences between how modern birds and their ancient cousins molted, that is, shed and regrew their feathers. In this episode, I tell you all about molting, what the new studies have found and why it is an important piece of puzzle in the story of evolution. I am Mohana Basu and you are watching Pure Science. Feathers are one of the key traits that all birds share. They are made of a protein called keratin, the same material as our fingernails and hair. And birds rely on them to fly, swim, camouflage, attract mates, stay warm and protect against the sun rays. But feathers are complex structures that can't be repaired. So as a means of keeping them in good shape, birds shed their feathers and grow replacements. This process is called molting. Baby birds molt in order to lose their baby feathers and grow adult ones. Mature birds continue to molt about once a year. At some point in our lives, we have found ourselves collecting a stray bird feather. According to researchers from the Chicago's Field Museum, molting is a fundamentally important process to birds because feathers are involved in so many different functions. The team wanted to find out how did this process evolve, how it differed across groups of birds and how it shaped bird evolution. Two new studies have examined the molting process in prehistoric birds. The first paper in the journal Cretaceous Research detailed the discovery of a cluster of feathers preserved in amber from a baby bird that lived 99 million years ago. Today, baby birds are on a spectrum in terms of how developed they are when they are born and how much help they need from their parents. Altershill birds hatch naked and helpless. They lack the feathers, which means that their parents can more efficiently transmit body heat directly to the baby's skin. On the other hand, precochial species are born with feathers and are fairly self-sufficient. All baby birds go through successive molds, periods when they lose feathers uh, they have and grow in a new set of feathers before eventually reaching their adult plumage. Molting takes a lot of energy and losing a lot of feathers at once can make it hard for the bird to keep itself warm. As a result, precochial chicks tend to molt slowly so that they keep a steady supply of feathers while altricial chicks that can rely on their parents for food and warmth undergo a simultaneous molt that is losing all their feathers at roughly the same time. The amber preserved feathers in this study are the first definitive fossil evidence of juvenile molting. And they reveal a baby bird whose life history doesn't match any birds alive today. The specimen is combination of precochial and altricial characteristics. According to the researchers, all the body feathers are basically at the exact same stage in development. So this means that all the feathers started growing almost simultaneously. However, this bird was almost certainly part of a now extinct group, which is called Enantiornithinnes which were highly precochial. The researchers hypothesized that the pressures of being a precochial baby bird that had to keep itself warm while undergoing a rapid molt might have been a factor in the ultimate doom of these birds. During the Cretaceous period, this species was the most diverse group of birds, but they went extinct along with the other non-avian dinosaurs. When the asteroid hit, global temperatures would have plummeted and resources would have become scarce. So, not only would these birds have even higher energy demands to stay warm, but they didn't have the resources to meet them. Meanwhile, another study published in the journal Communications Biology examined molting patterns in modern birds to better understand how the process first evolved. 
In modern adult birds, molting usually happens once a year in a sequential process in which they replace just a few of their feathers at a time over the course of a few weeks. That way, they are still able to fly throughout the molting process. Simultaneous molts in adult birds in which all the flight feathers fall out at the same time and regrow within a couple of weeks are rarer and tend to show up in aquatic birds like ducks that don't absolutely need to fly in order to find food and avoid predators. It's very rare to find evidence of molting in fossil birds and other feathered dinosaurs but researchers so far did not know why. The thought was that birds with simultaneous molts which occur in a shorter duration of time will be less represented in the fossil record because less time is spent molting which means fewer opportunities to die during the mold and become a fossil showing signs of molting. To test their hypothesis, the researchers delved into the field museum's collection of modern birds. They tested more than 600 skins of modern birds stored in the field museum to look for evidence of active molting. They found dozens of specimens in an active mold, but among the simultaneous molters, they found hardly any. While these are modern birds, not fossils, they provide a useful proxy. The absence of molting fossil birds, despite active molting being so prevalent in the sample of modern bird specimens, suggest that fossil birds simply weren't molting as often as modern birds. They may have undergone a simultaneous molt or they may not have molted on a yearly basis the way most birds do today. Both the amber specimen and the study of molting in modern birds point to a common theme that prehistoric birds and feathered dinosaurs, especially ones from groups that didn't survive the mass extinction extinction molded differently from today's birds. This is Mohana Basu, assistant editor at The Print. If you like our work, do follow us on all social media platforms to stay updated.